Welcome back to the mixtape. This time we're going through a pretty broad topic around AI, the good and the bad, use cases you've heard of, ethical concerns, anything that I could sink my teeth into in the past week. And of course, I have the best person to talk about AI with me. So we'll go through a few things. The first thing that I had pulled up here is actually something uh, I found through your Twitter, Swix, a podcast called the Hacker News Recap, which is totally AI generated front to back including the script and the voiceover. And I've been subscribed to it for like the past week and it's really informative. There's stuff that I think is kind of <laughs> janky or wrong with it, but it dumps a lot of information to you at once in a pretty, pretty nice way. <laughs> this one I haven't listened to actually. I just wanted to play a clip of it and talk about like how it does, you know, how does it sound? How does it cover things and what can it do better? Cause this feels like a first stab at AI generated news. And I'm starting to see it as like an actual use case. In an enchanting dance between critique and retaliation, one brave blogger dared to criticize Amazon's policies only to face an imposing legal challenge. The valiant writer exposed Amazon's rule that prevents sellers from pricing their products lower off Amazon, ultimately leading to harm for consumers. However, Amazon's formidable response was to serve the brave soul with a lawsuit, setting the stage for an intimate look at how the powerful corporation takes on dissenting voices. In the comments, discussions revolved around the difference between a lawsuit and a subpoena, the necessity of disclaimers like, I am not a lawyer, and the legal implications of being served with a subpoena. Commenters discussed whether Molson, the individual involved in the situation, requires a lawyer to navigate the ensuing legal complexities and protect his rights against potential harassment through the discovery process. They also debated the cost of responding to a subpoena and the responsibilities of witnesses in legal cases. Some comments focused on the use of AI, specifically ChatGPT, to generate documents in response to legal requests and the risks associated with relying on AI-generated content in legal matters. I like that it has a different music backdrop for every individual story. I assume a human's oh, just like throwing easy. that on there. It's it's easy to do, but I, podcasts usually don't do that. They just throw on different stuff. Yeah. Right, because this whole thing is scripted, so it's programmable. It's great. It's really good. This is kind of what I wish. As a podcast producer, like I, I wish it was something like this. Yeah, Anchor was supposed to do it, and then Spotify bought it, and it went to shit. So I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, well, listen to one more segment, and I have like a couple thoughts on how it does things. A groundbreaking ruling in United States v. Smith has established that border searches of cell phones require a warrant, marking a significant shift in privacy protection. The decision received praise from EFF, who has been pushing for a warrant in border electronic device searches for almost a decade. As warrantless device searches at the border increase, the application of the Riley balancing test to electronic devices brings hope that personal privacy may finally prevail. In the comments, the main discussion revolves around the potential national security risks and privacy concerns surrounding phone searches at borders. Some users mention the dangers of having sensitive information on phones, such as two-factor codes and password vaults, and how compromising them could potentially affect many major corporations. Others argue that searching phones at borders without a warrant is a violation of privacy rights, and the potential for border agents to abuse their discretionary power raises concerns. The discussion also touches upon the geographic areas in which border searches can take place, referencing the 100-mile border zone and its potential implications on the majority of the U.S. population. Additionally, users share their thoughts on possible technical solutions, such as removable storage or thin client phones, to minimize the risks associated with device searches. Some commenters question whether the ruling prohibiting warrantless searches applies only to citizens or others as well. Yeah. So just trying to give a taste of how it does things. You can feel there's a formula throughout all of it, and it just repeats over and over again with that formula. And it, it feels like an NPR podcast in the way that it summarizes things. Wow. That's high praise. <laughs> it, it is. No, it's that approach. I shouldn't say it's as good as an NPR podcast. NPR, yeah, like they're yeah, yeah, NPR would be offended by that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that the style that I'm kind of referencing is the talking about every side of the argument and doing broad strokes over everything instead of having a yeah. you know like a set narrative of here's the point of view that the speaker is pushing. And usually, you have to go to different news outlets in order to sort of feel that out. It's kind of nice that it summarizes everything, but it also, I don't know. Sometimes it feels like it's such a broad stroke that a lot of it is lost. And it's like, okay, I got a glimpse into every part of the conversation, but I didn't really feel the voice in any of it. So I have no conclusion 
but it's not trying to help you find a conclusion either. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, for, for me, it's just, it's, it's uh, consuming this media in a different form, right? Like, um, I, I do like Hacker News. Uh, I do think it surfaces stuff that I wouldn't find anywhere else. I think the comments are useful, but I don't want to be on there uh, all day throughout the day. I just want like a nice little yeah. recap thing. And I don't want to use my eyes as well. I use my eyes way too much during work. So like this way I can kind of consume it in an audio fashion while I'm walking or um, my non-existent exercising, which I need to be doing more of anyway. Um, uh, so I just think it's nice. Like AI is so good at this, right? Like it's it's automated production every single day. It doesn't take a day off. Uh, it's super cheap. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so when I called this out, the tweet that you saw, you know, I kind of called this out as the content flipping, where um, I saw this AI podcast doing a useful service for me, which is summarizing Hacker News and helping me skim it. And, and you know, when I, when I want to have more information, I can click right in the show notes because the show notes are always up to date, unlike other podcasters who, you know, have terrible show notes. Yes. It's all manual, right? Yeah. And in the meantime, I was listening to a bunch of other human created podcasts that were declining in quality very obviously right like the all-in podcast mm. is like mostly politics now and like uh you know that th- that is their prerogative because they're running it right that's just what they feel like talking about but i as a listener get less engaged because i don't care who the republican nominee is it's going to be trump like i don't <laughs> i don't need yeah, to know what yeah. your course candidate is um and then uh the my first million pod which is another like it, it, you know it's like all in, but for millionaires instead of billionaires, hmm. uh, they they increase they recently increased their ad load by so much. Like every every five minutes, there's a new ad, and it's it's just really really obnoxious. And I was like, I'm not enjoying this anymore. Uh, so I just tweeted about that. And Sean Perry actually follows me. Uh, he likes he saw the tweet, and, and I think he he like took that to heart a little bit. And then finally, NPR, uh, you know the the pinnacle of podcasting in America, um, had had a bunch of really bad layoffs recently and they had to shut down invisibilia which is one of the really nice podcasts that i that i used to love um so basically human podcasting on the decline ai podcasting on the way up uh at some point the ai singularity is when you actually consume more ai created content than human yeah. created content and i don't know how you feel about it but it's going to happen i know because there's for things like news, I haven't formed like a strong relationship with a newscaster or anything. Tech Meme Ride Home is the closest one, I guess, because I've listened to it for so long. But for that kind of content, I don't really care about the human connection. I just want to know what's happening in the world in a relatively quick fashion. Hacker News may not be the best glimpse into that, but I could see this format. Like if you just give it any data set, it could probably summarize an internet forum of some kind. Like we we've yeah. actually talked about this for astro because we do a well we haven't talked about using ai for it but we do have a weekly recap where we summarize everything that's happened in the astro community shout out important community members and maybe we don't want an ai presenter because we like the personality of like get on a core member have slides and make it look nice but if we could have something that goes through all of the community discussions and our change log and summarizes those into slides that can easily be explained. That would be way better for actually like making sure community members are heard first off, because we have to manually go through and say, okay, who was the person that was like a superstar in the support thread? Oh, it's this person because they messaged one, two, three, four, five times. Like an, an AI could do that kind of stuff for us to discover people who are really, you know, kicking ass in open source, because it's hard to advocate for people like that. Yeah. Um, so I kind of called this the sort of two schools of thought in terms of AI products thinking. You know, the, uh, the, it's, it's reductively called the Jobs School and the Zuckerberg School. Uh, the Zuckerberg School <laughs> as the AI replace human uh, and human autonomy, yeah. human action, human uh, decision, um, and controls your emotions based on the algorithm. Um, and then the, the job School is very much using computers as a bicycle for the mind, like augmenting your desire and your, your intent. Uh, but mm. but not replacing you and just kind of um, doing what you would want to do anyway, but better. Um, so I so I definitely think about this in terms of like how can we augment instead of replace? Yeah, for sure. 
for podcasting, it's like, well, this is kind of just replaced for certain, <laughs> for certain classes of podcasts. But I, I've heard like from content creators anyways, in order to make money, you're moving to YouTube and Twitch and other formats. You're taking sponsorships in different forms. Podcasts on its own as an audio medium. It's not the easiest thing to monetize. So it could augment for certain like newscasting, but humans can do other forms of media that adapt it in some way. So you don't replace any jobs there. It's a tough argument because you're getting into like news reporting there. I don't really know what the future would be if <laughs> certain classes of news reporting were replaced by AI, but I like to think it could augment. It's going to happen. It's, it's inevitable. You think it's inevitable? Not, not only do I think it's inevitable, I, um, your comment actually made me want to try it myself. Um, you know, my YouTube is not something I invest a, a ton in, but um, <clears throat> I mean, if I started a, a channel that was just like an AI presenter that like recap the, the, you know, it was just a Hacker News recap, but instead of podcast form, it's just like a video forum. And like, I find some off the shelf, uh, you know, crappy um, image synthesizer that, that presents those news. I think it oh, could do yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, stock photo stuff, it works annoyingly well. Like Really? Uh, Where? It, uh, well, I'm thinking about Fireship, for example. He does a lot of yeah, but he's photos funny. and footage. No, like, but he's yes, funny, but though. He's, he's real funny. funny. Certain no, parts of his place. videos could be automated. I love his stuff. He's probably my favorite YouTuber that isn't me. So okay. it's, All yeah. Right. We'll make Fireship AI. Uh, and, Fireship and AI. We'll he's already with... doing it. He has a product to use his voice. To, really? To, just oh, as an cool. AI voice. Yeah. I think he spun it down yeah, he because said, not enough people grabbed it. Yeah. But he, he doesn't right. have the most human voice. Um, <laughs> cool. I no, I, I just think it'd be oh. fun. Like, so I, one of my favorite things about YouTubers is like when they start feuds, but it's kind of like a fake feud, like everyone's friends, you know? Uh, just like having yeah. a fake feud that's like, this is like, we're a fire ship, but we're AI. And, and then like Jeff, yeah. Jeff you know, the, the guy behind fire ship can, can just be like waging war against us. And I think it'd just be hilarious. I think it'd be a, a really fun to watch. Oh, that would be so good. All right. Oh, yeah. We can move on to number three here. We're going to see if we can hit all five. I think we can. Yeah, it's only been an hour right. in. That's it. Yeah. And this one's just a blog post, which means I have to narrate okay. awkwardly. But who cares? Okay. Yeah, I just really like this post. So I at least wanted to, to talk about it. Because everyone's, well, I'll save this for the intro. Everyone's loving the, the chatbot thing. And oh, man. Yeah, it keeps, it keeps killing just the Google Hangouts tab if it's in the background. If I have it as a standalone tab, I think that'll force it to just keep it up. Yeah, let me move this over here next to my. Oh, uh, this is Amelia's post. OK. Oh, you're familiar with it. Uh, yeah, so far, I'm like three for three and like knowing uh, <laughs> all the yeah. sources. Not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I don't pull from really deep depths, I don't think. <laughs> all right. Ooh, got a screen share. 